Hey guys, it's Sneaky Turtle. Welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video. In this video, I'll be building uh, a VTOL uh, that goes to Lathe. Uh, the VTOL was already built. I'll make a follow-up video uh, showing how this VTOL was built because it would have taken too long to put how this VTOL was built and put it in a video where it was launched to Lathe. So in this video, we'll be launching this VTOL to Lathe, and then in the next video, I'll be able to show you guys how to make this really cool VTOL that actually works uh, really well. The upper stage we have, I think, the largest fuel tank in the game, um, with the uh, with two of the Rhino engines, and then another uh, lower stage tank, which is the largest in the game again, with I believe it's either six or eight Clydesdale solid rocket boosters. Um, yeah, six Clydesdale rocket boosters, and and the Clydesdale rocket boosters, uh, along with six F1 engines are able to easily push the craft uh, to lathe with the especially help with the rhino engines and the f1 engines uh, putting the inflatable heat shield on the top so that i can survive uh, lathe's very very deadly atmosphere as it would turn out would become much more deadly than i thought it would be uh, but now we can crossfade to the launch and finally launch this vehicle sitting on the launch pad i move the staging around a little bit and then Fire up the engines, slowly throttle up, and then release. Now we are going to speed this up to about six times speed, just to make this launch go a little bit faster. Um, the Clydesdale boosters on the only engines running right now because I ended up not needing to look at fuel engines until later. Uh, I forgot to do my gravity turn, so I had to do a very drastic gravity turn here at the end and just pitch it all the way over. Uh, and then these solid rocket boosters on our fuel, they get separated, F1 engines fire up to full power, um, and we have to get rid of this fairing as soon as possible because the fairing weighs a lot. So, getting rid of the fairing, um, I accidentally had the inflatable heat shield inflated for some reason, uh, so that was a problem. Uh, activating the lower stage engines, firing up, getting into uh, orbit now. And the two Rhino engines provide plenty of thrust to get into orbit. Much better than nuclear engines. I very much dislike nuclear engines. Even though they're very efficient, I dislike them. Um, now we can finish the orbit off and then get ready for our orbital maneuvers. Now looking at the map screen, getting the proper encounter, and then getting ready to do that burn. Uh, I have to apologize for how inefficient this burn was. I don't do much interplanetary travel in this game. I mostly go to just Min Miss and the Mun, because that's just more enjoyable for me, and Lathe was, this was actually one of my first, I think it was my second time going to Lathe, so it was it was pretty cool, actually. Um, Jewel looks very nice. I, I don't think that Lathe looks very good. I think the, the ground textures for Lathe look really bad, even with the Parallax mod. It just looks very barren and empty. Uh, but we have just finished the burn, and now we're getting ready to go uh, to Lathe, and we have all of the uh, correct inclinations to have a perfect encounter with Lathe so that we enter the atmosphere at about 32,000 meters which would then allow us to enter the atmosphere safely. Now you can see the awesome gas giant jewel in the background. Um, and so I do have to apologize for one thing. Um, so I've tried, I tried this mission like six times and I couldn't get it to work. That's because the fins on the back of the vehicle were uh, just incinerating every time. So I did actually have to reduce the re-entry heating a little bit. Um, and then also with the spin, so I do apologize for that, um, but those fins on the back were the only thing that were blowing up, and they just could not handle heat. So I do apologize for that, um, and I'll make sure that I use heat shields more properly in the future, and so that they can cover the main rocket and the fins. Uh, we are now coming up on a descent, so the rentry heating has finally stopped. Uh, I'm leaving the, the big heat shield on the front just so that um, we can get some extra drag to slow us down a little bit faster. Uh, we get parachutes deployment, they will deploy at 5,000 meters. And now we can speed it up and go down to the bottom. 
uh, Jewel in the background. Jewel looks really awesome. I, th I think they did a really good job with that. But I just with Lath, Lath wasn't so barren. Like, it's very strange. Uh, jettisoning the heat shield, and then I actually had to use the jet engines because there wasn't quite enough power in the in the or quite enough drag with the parachutes to get it to land like I hoped. So I had to actually use the jet engines a little bit to get it to land. And then once. The vehicle lands, we can unfold the wings to get everything working properly. Um, I really liked how this VTOL came out. I want to build an iteration that looks almost identical, but actually uses propellers because that'd make it much more efficient and able to use electricity instead of fuel. Um, I think that'd be a lot of fun. But now we're coming up on a landing using those jet engines to minimize the damage, and there was no damage, so that's good. Cut off the jet engines, the parachutes magically disappear, and then we can unfold the wings. So I made a quick save first before anything uh, bad happens because things with robotic parts in Kerbal Space Program tend to not work super well, so lowering the traverse rate to make sure nothing happens, and then we can unfold the wings. Which I think looks really cool. It looks a lot like the the Osprey, the U.S. Osprey. Th this is what the design was based on. The U.S. Osprey, kind of without propellers, so. An epic little deployment, and then we can get ready to lock those. So they are now locked. Um, and then we can fire up those engines. Uh, because it's so loaded with fuel right now, we actually have to use the afterburners to take off. So I'll engage the afterburners here in a second. We have afterburner deployment, and the vehicle just lifts right off the ground. And then we can slowly pitch the servos forward so that the uh, we slowly get lift underneath the wings, which will then allow us to keep tilting those engines further and further forwards so that we can get a uh, perfect speed and perfect alignment so that we can uh, go to this island over here instead of being in the water. So actually this vehicle's pretty fast, so it gets to the island relatively quickly, which is awesome. I'm going to gain a little bit of altitude here so that we can see Jewel again. So I'm going to fire up the afterburners in a second. Yeah, there's the afterburners. The afterburners are a really nice addition um, because they give plenty of extra power whenever it's needed. If I'm vertically landing and I activated the engines too late, then I can just fire those up and they can help land, or if I have too much fuel, then they can help take off, so they're pretty nice and getting that little thumbnail there. Uh, so, thumbnails are very important. So we have to remember this. But now I'm coming in for a uh, landing at this little island. Um, vehicle's pretty fast. I actually think it's really cool. Um, it's a little bit of glitched parts, but that's... I think that's fine. I was kind of going after the design of the... VTOL from Battlefield 2042. I don't actually play that game, but I thought it, the VTOL kind of looked pretty cool, so. We are now adjusting thrust, getting the vehicle to slow down. And then I ended up look, finding some, like, little red glowing thing, so I went and flew over to that because it looked cool. And then I looked off in the distance saw, like, a... I don't know what that was, a little, like beam of light or whatever that was. If someone knows what that is, please let me in the comments below because I don't I've only been to Lathe once. This is my first time landing on it, so engines are off, brakes are on. Uh, and then we can uh, just use the engines to climb up this hill because uh don't want the vehicle rolling down the hill or the curbles dying or anything. Um and then I EVA'd one of the Kerbals, and they just died. They just fell and exploded, so that was unfortunate. But now we can plant the flag, and that will be the conclusion to this video. So thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.